What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. Today I've finally made it to posting this build. Now I've been testing this build for a couple of days in live streams and I've finally tweaked it down to what I like exactly. So I'm gonna get into that build real quick. I am using two Relic Hunter Treasure Seekers for this build because this is a War Party build. So I'm just gonna throw those stats for those thralls up on the screen real quick. And if you wanna really dive into it, you can take a look. However, the important thing to understand is that both of them leveled for agility. So I've given them both katanas. And the katanas that they have are just simply star metal tier katanas crafted with a, a tier 4 tempersmith so if you had a bladesmith they would end up with a little bit more damage i have buffed them with pork and agility potions for healing they are using the exquisite stew i feel like it's the best healing for the cost to make it i gave them the stygian soldier armor for the heavy armor rating you can see it's 1718 on that thrall and on top of that, it gives an additional 5% per piece to their agility damage, giving them a total of 25% increased agility damage. And the armor was crafted with a shield right tier 4 armorer, and I put the bulk plating on it for the additional armor rating. Now I want you to take note of my stamina and my health real quick. You can see I have 420 health and 99 stamina right now. This is only right when you actually create this build. If you die or log out, those numbers are gonna go down. There's some sort of bug with either the sated buff or with the corrupted build that reduces both your hit points and your stamina if you die or if you log out. And honestly, I think the bug may actually be from the build when you actually create it. There's a perk that you get during the Vitality stream that gives you 100 extra hit points. Now you do override that perk when you corrupt it. So it's a good possibility that the bug is actually having the extra hit points. So for this video, we're gonna actually say that you have 369 total hit points. I know, 69 celebration, right? Well, whistle me, Dixie. And that is staying sated the entire time. So obviously you'll lose eight hit points if you're not sated. And I think three or four in your stamina if you're not sated. You can see I still have 99 stamina. Now I'm calling this build the Immortal Commander because played right, it's going to be very difficult for you as a character to die. You do have to manage your thralls a little bit, give them high healing items, and make sure that you are giving them time to heal in between fights, but as long as you kind of go by those rules, you and your thralls should be virtually unstoppable. I do still have issues of fighting the rock slide, but really the only way to fight the rock slide is to cheese him with snake arrows because he is way unbalanced at his attack speeds. So for this build, we have 20 in vitality, 20 in authority, and 20 in grit. We also have the vitality and the authority corrupted at 19 each. So our first perk in Vitality is Grotesque, and that's gonna give us passive health regeneration. The passive health regeneration that you get from Corrupted Vitality, as long as you have a good amount of corruption in it, is faster than the normal health regeneration. The second is Twisted Flesh. You have a chance to deflect damage. This happens more often than I expected, but it is still random, so don't rely on it to save your life. The next one is Petrified. That's going to make you immune to bleed, poison, disease, and sunder effects. The only effect you're actually going to be exposed to is the cripple effect. So that is a really strong perk. And then the last perk in this is Glutton for Punishment. When you take damage, you regenerate the last instance of damage taken over 15 seconds. So if you take a big hit, just get away from the damage for the next 15 seconds and you are going to regenerate that lost health. Moving down to authority, we have the first perk, which is Frenzy. That gives your followers an additional 3% increased damage 
per authority attribute giving them a total of 57% increased damage because it's 19 points that we put into corrupting authority. Now, when I was testing this build in the live stream, people were confused by whether that perk worked with the War Party perk because it says your followers are no longer influenced by your stats. And I have tested and verified that it does work with War Party. The next perk is Flesh Bond. Damage taken by you is split between you and your followers. So you take half the damage and your followers take half the damage. Now, when it says split between your followers, it actually gives each one of your followers the half damage. So if you take 10 points of damage, each follower is going to take five points of damage. It doesn't get split again between them. Each and every one of them actually takes that full half. The last perk that we have here is War Party. Your maximum followers are increased by one. However, your statistics no longer increase your followers damage output. So any armor that you're wearing that buffs your followers or any potions or food that you're using to buff your followers is no longer going to work. And you can use whatever combination of followers you want. Two thralls like I did, a thrall and a pet, two pets, for zombies, however you want to set it up to fit your gameplay style. And then the last set of points all went into grit. So we have the first perk, which is tenacity, armor increased by 40, and stamina by 20. We have endurance for the faster stamina regeneration. We have defensive posture, so a reduction in damage by 15% while attacking or blocking. And then the last perk, Steel Thwed, actually makes it so that we cannot take more than 25% of our maximum health in damage per hit. So when I had 420 total hit points, the most damage I could take was 105. And then when I had the 369 total hit points, the most damage I could take is 92. And I actually took a full combo straight to the face from the arena champion, just to see if that would kill me with this particular perk. But as you can see, it didn't kill me, it didn't kill my followers, and my regeneration is so fast between the glutton for punishment and the damage that my followers are doing to the target. Now the last little things to wrap this build up is the Abyssal Armor. That's going to give me 1200 total armor. It's going to give me an additional 50% bonus to agility or strength damage weapons. So you could choose whichever style weapon you want. It's going to give me additional stamina and additional health as well. This is also going to give me an additional 30 carry weight. Remember, we didn't put any points in expertise, so the way that I'm buffing my carry weight is by using the Elixir of Numbing and the Lasting Feast. Those are both going to give you an additional 45 carry weight. Now I did test this build with one less perk in grit and putting one full perk into expertise and I was able to get 175 total carry weight that way. But with this armor and the buffs to my carry weight, I'm actually getting 190 total carry weight with this build. So not only am I getting more carry weight by using the buffs and this armor than I would if I put points in expertise, but I think that the ability to only take 25% of your health bar in damage is very important for some of the fights that you're going into, and it's going to mean that you're splitting even less damage with your followers when you do end up taking hits from things like the arena champion. All in all, with this build and the time that I've spent with it, the only causes for concern are going to be enemies that cause poison, as that is going to transfer immediately over to your followers, even though you don't take any poison damage. So you'll have to watch their health pools if you're fighting something that poisons. The only other thing is really the rock slide, and again, I think the rock slide is difficult to fight with any type of build unless you're going for a pure cheese poison build where you're not taking followers and you're just shooting it with snake arrows. 
Probably the last thing that I should mention here is if you're doing a build like this, stamina is very, very difficult to manage. So I do recommend using the herbal tea. I pretty much recommend using the herbal tea all the time. Any one of your builds, you can use that herbal tea to give you the increased regeneration of your stamina. And you can stack that up to 10 times to get your stamina to regen very quickly. You guys, let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about this build? Is this something that you would actually use after seeing this video? Look at me, I'm flying! I'm oh, no, wait, maybe not. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next, and I'll meet you over there.